Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Dennis Cavanaugh here with the National Weather Service office out of Little Rock. And I'm going to talk to you today about what we're expecting in terms of weather, especially the viewability for the upcoming eclipse on Monday, April 8th. Today is Friday, April 5th, 2024. This is just after 1 p.m. And we'll go through the latest information that we have at this point. So looking at the forecast, if you've been getting our email briefings or paying attention to our forecast products, not a whole lot has changed. We are still looking at a large scale weather pattern that is going to favor uh, an active weather period uh, once we get into Monday evening, uh, especially into Tuesday, midweek, uh, multiple rounds of showers and thunderstorms. So the real big forecast question here is how fast is that moisture going to return across Arkansas, bringing low cloud cover across much of the state? Uh, we know that, that that moisture is going to return on something like a warm front across the state of Arkansas on Monday. But if that warm front waits until after the eclipse, we could still have some really good viewing conditions for the eclipse. Conversely, if that warm front lifts further north faster, uh, that could put some low uh, stratus, those um, kind of smooth clouds that, that block out, uh, would essentially block out good viewing of the eclipse. Um, it, if that warm front moves north, it's going to bring those low clouds with it, and it'll still get dark with the eclipse, which is pretty cool. However, you won't be able to see the whole evolution of the eclipse, and I know that's what most people are hoping for. So we'll talk, uh, talk through the timing of that warm front moving north uh, across Arkansas on Monday and how that's going to impact the forecast. So looking at things, we have hundreds uh, of different variations of weather models that will give us different solutions. And so this is kind of an amalgamation of all of those models and what we're thinking is going to lead to it, at least 50% clear skies. So what's going to give you a decent chance of at least seeing the, the eclipse evolving uh, as we get to midday on Monday and, and the eclipse and especially totality starts uh, right around 2 p.m. So looking at this map right here, you, you can see most locations along and north of Interstate 40 and that Interstate 30 between Little Rock and Memphis. Uh, it's got a, a medium to uh, well, a medium chance for most locations. And then you go in far northeast Arkansas, and you've got a pretty high chance of, of having at least 50% or less cloud cover in, in order to see a, a decent amount of the eclipse's evolution. Uh, on Monday, and, and especially we're talking that uh, that window from when the eclipse starts to peak totality or to totality, uh, and to then uh, when the when the moon moves out of the sun's uh, scope from our position uh, when when that eclipse ends. So we're really talking, uh, you know, probably a 11:30 till about 3:30 uh, on Monday is is what this forecast is valid for. So. About half the state has a decent chance of being able to see the eclipse through maybe 50% cloud cover. You get into southern Arkansas and it's not looking quite as good because that's where we think that warm front is going to be. And that warm front really marks the line of good versus poor eclipse viewability here. So not looking so hot across southern Arkansas right now, but central and northern Arkansas, there's a, a fair chance that you'll at least be able to see a part of the eclipse. Um, now, taking a look at this from a regional standpoint, the eclipse, for the United States anyways, the eclipse is going to um, enter the United States from southwest Texas. Uh, as the eclipse uh, moves northeast, you can see most uh, of the eclipse path through Texas has that same poor uh, viewability, ex expected viewability, uh, because of that, the same position of that warm front. Uh, all that moisture is where we expect to be bottled up across much of central, uh, south, and south Texas, southern uh, Arkansas, and of course, northern Louisiana as well. Um, and so all of those areas, they don't have a great chance to see a lot of the eclipse at this time. Now, keep in mind, this is an average of hundreds of model solutions, so it, it doesn't mean you can't see the eclipse in Texas uh, or 
southern Arkansas for that matter. Uh, it's just looking three days out, it doesn't look like your chances are all that great. Uh, again, it, you get into central Arkansas and you start to have at least a medium chance of viewing the eclipse through the cloud cover. Uh, and then as you go northeast, we have some a uh, little bit deeper reservoir of dry air in place uh, across southeast Missouri uh, and then as, as it moves northeast into the Ohio Valley there as well. Now, taking a look, that's, that's a bunch of the averages of models. So this is a look at individual model solutions. And, and these are four of the biggest, what we call deterministic model runs. So individual answers of, of what the forecast might be on Monday. Now, in these graphics, uh, of course, you see the state of Arkansas outlined there in yellow. Um, the purple, in, in this case, is high relative humidity. So that's where it's cloudy. Uh, that's where you'll have uh, low clouds in place. Uh, and then the green areas is when you have drier air in place. So not as cloudy. Uh, you could still have some high clouds over there, but at least those low clouds won't be blocking out. Uh, won't be blocking out the sun and the eventual eclipse. Uh, and this is all valid at the same time. So all these models are valid at what we call 18Z, which is 1 p.m. Central Daylight Time on Monday, April 8th. So we take a look at model one up there, and the uh, you can see all the purple uh, over much of Arkansas and those... Uh, those wind barbs indicating southerly winds means that those clouds are moving north. Uh, if Model 1 verifies that warm front is basically in northern Arkansas, that means there's a pretty, pretty bad chance that you'll be able to view the evolution of the eclipse uh, if that first model, uh, if, if, that's the, if that ends up being the answer, if the warm front moves north that fast, and that's the fastest model solution that we have right now, uh, if that happens, not, not very good viewing opportunities for the eclipse uh, for much of Arkansas, maybe far northern Arkansas, um, you, you, might, you might still be able to, to see it. Again, that maybe 50% uh, cloud cover. Um, but central and southern Arkansas, probably not much. Now, again, if you're in the path of totality, it, it will still get completely dark in the middle of the day, which is very cool. Um, but I know you want to be able to see the evolution of the eclipse. You want to be able to have eyes on it, hopefully through solar filters. Uh, don't, don't stare at the eclipse itself. Uh, as we look at Model 2 here, uh, Model 2 and 3, both, uh, they both show uh, a more ideal or more optimal, maybe is the way to put it, situation for uh, a slower warm frontal passage on Monday. So models two and three, they have that warm front stalled out in southern Arkansas. Now those models do bring it north uh, in you know in about three hours time, but the it's not going to move all the way into northern Arkansas just in a couple of hours. So if models two and three verify, that's probably the best case scenario for Arkansas, in which much of uh, much of central. Uh, maybe west central uh, and northwest and, and north central Arkansas and northeast Arkansas have really good viewability. Those portions of the state where you're going to uh, have totality, most of the state has has pretty good viewability. Again, this, this, doesn't, this doesn't account for high clouds. There will probably still be some high clouds there no matter what, but you can probably still see the sun and the eclipse through those high clouds. Um, the biggest thing in play here is that warm front. If that warm front can stay south, that's going to give us uh, much better uh, viewability for the eclipse uh, here across Arkansas. And finally, model four, uh, that's, that's um, the last model, the last uh, deterministic solution I have for you here. Uh, that's you can see that's kind of a mix uh, be between the two models there. It's kind of averaging out the, the dry air and some of the humidity. Uh, and that's gonna be closer to what those initial graphics I showed you that, you know, maybe that 50% cloud cover. Th this is truly a coin flip, a 50-50 chance of whether you would be able to see the eclipse. It probably wouldn't be completely overcast skies, but there would be enough low cloud cover to where it would likely block portions of the eclipse 
uh, from wherever your perspective is. So if you're looking for optimal Eclipse viewability, we're, we're really going to be hoping for the model solutions for two and three, but this is the nature of meteorology, uh, the, the storm system that is going to determine how fast that warm front moves back north is still just off the Pacific coast. So we haven't even started to sample it yet with our, uh, with our weather balloon network. So we'll hopefully see some improvement in model skill as that upper level low pressure system uh, starts to get sampled by the United States uh, weather balloon network and and hopefully we'll see the models converge on a solution and in addition to that we'll hope it's two and three but we don't know yet it you know the model there's nothing wrong with model solution one it's it's a it's a timing difference of that warm front on the order of two or three hours and that's going to make all the difference uh we've you know we've really got to We've really got that brief period of time before that warm front moves north. If we can get the eclipse in before the warm front moves north, we'll be in good shape. And that's what we'll be very closely tracking here uh, over the weekend as as we uh, get into Monday and and hopefully good viewability for the eclipse. But we'll we'll see how that pans out. Now, in addition to the cloud forecast, um, we will we have many many people traveling uh, to Arkansas to see the eclipse from out of state. Uh, don't know much about the state, may not know much about the weather patterns here in Arkansas. Once the eclipse ends, we do have a at least a low potential for severe thunderstorms in the southwest portion of the state. And, and that might nudge its way up into portions uh, or further into southern Arkansas, maybe as far north as central Arkansas. So that's, you know, if if you're here for the eclipse and then you're leaving, uh, something to keep track of, especially if you're leaving the state to the south, southwest. Um, just be advised that you may run into some strong thunderstorms uh, as, as you attempt to exit the state uh, Monday afternoon and Monday evening. Uh, Monday evening and overnight is when that best chance of severe weather is going to be. Now, uh, apart from the severe weather, as that warm front lifts north, as that upper level low pressure system um, makes its presence felt here across the natural state, uh, we will have multiple rounds of showers and thunderstorms that are going to drop some heavy rain uh, across the state. And this, this is apart from the severe weather. The severe weather is its own threat. Uh, we have much more confidence in the heavy rainfall threat. Uh, and, and that's going to be multiple rounds scattered to numerous thunderstorms. Uh, and again, this is mainly going to be Monday evening, Monday night into Tuesday morning. Uh, multiple rounds of thunderstorms dropping quite a bit of rain, especially really focused um, maybe just south of that warm front, um, mainly across central and southern Arkansas. But that heavy rainfall threat does expand to include the entire state with the uncertainty on where that warm front's going to be exactly. As we go into Tuesday, if you are hanging out, uh, that's awesome. We love to have you here in Arkansas. Uh, if you're hanging out, Tuesday's severe weather outlook is very similar. Uh, to uh, Monday that basically that warm front is going to become stationary. Whenever it moves north, it's, it's going to stop and it's going to hang out through much of the week ahead, or at least through the middle of the week ahead. So uh, that severe weather threat, low confidence in that, but again, it would be um, the severe weather chances are going to be highest across southwest into southern Arkansas, uh, probably not as much as of a severe weather threat in central and northern Arkansas. And that's mainly because we're expecting so many showers and thunderstorms Monday night into Tuesday morning that that's going to push that severe weather threat a little further south. What it's not going to do, though, is, is get rid of the heavy rainfall threat. The heavy rainfall threat actually expands to include almost all of central and southern Arkansas uh, and starts to creep up north there to the Memphis area as well. Uh, so covering a, a large portion of eastern Arkansas, uh, a, a wide area where we could get some heavy rainfall could lead, to, could lead to some localized flooding. So you really want to pay attention if you're, you know, if you're leaving the state, uh, trying to head back home. On Tuesday, you may run into some heavy rainfall, could certainly slow your commute. And, you know, if you do get off the interstate for, for whatever reason, if the, if the roads are real busy and you're looking for a shortcut, be very, very careful. On, uh, don't drive over any water-covered roads, any low spots on the roads. You just never know how deep that water is. So 
just be careful uh, if, if you are trying to head home on the day on, on Tuesday here across Arkansas. Um, the eclipse itself, uh, the eclipse is basically the moon getting between the sun and the earth in the middle of the day. And that's going to cast a completely dark shadow uh, across a small portion of the United States. But by gosh, Arkansas is right in the middle of it. Uh, we won't have another uh, total solar eclipse until 24 August of 2045. And that will once again move right through Arkansas. But if you're like me, I don't really want to wait another 21 years to see the eclipse. So we're really going to hope for some good viewing conditions here as we uh, as we uh, track that warm front. Uh, keep in mind, if you are watching the eclipse here across Arkansas, don't stare at, at the sun, even when it's uh, partially or mostly blocked by the moon. Uh, it can still do quite a bit of damage to your eyes. So use a solar filter, use those solar glasses until you get into totality. Then you can take those glasses off and hopefully have a clear view to admire the spectacular uh, total solar eclipse that will be here uh, over Arkansas Monday afternoon, uh, April 8th. Um, that's all I've got for right now. Um, if you tuned into this, really appreciate your uh, taking the time to listen in. Here's the information for our office. Our webpage is www.weather.gov forward slash LZK. You can always give us a phone call or contact us on social media, on Facebook, Twitter, uh, or you could make a comment on our YouTube channel here and uh, let us know uh, if you have any questions and, and what you think. So we hope you're doing well. Thanks for visiting Arkansas. And uh, we do hope you get to see, uh, have good viewing conditions for the eclipse, but we'll keep you updated one way or the other.